Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be showing you how to paint a Blood Angels Bladeguard veteran, who is of course for Warhammer 40,000 by Games Workshop. Now the Blood Angels colour scheme is one that I'm very fond of. It's very bold and distinctive and looks fantastic when laid out on the tabletop. And in this video we're going to be showing you the majority of techniques that you need to paint such an army. The thing to point out with Blood Angels is there's actually quite a bit of variation on the colours they use for their armour. Especially when it comes to the guys wearing red armour, they'll have different coloured helmets to denote their ranks. Now our guy being a veteran will have a gold helmet, but depending on what you're painting you'll just need to change that part of it up. For example for an assault troop you'll want to switch to yellow instead. But regardless of what you're painting, if you want to paint a Blood Angels army, this video is going to be of use to you. So we hope you enjoy it and we'll see you at the desk. To paint your Blood Angels, the first thing you need to do, of course, is to undercoat the miniatures. And for Blood Angels, their main armor color is Mephiston Red, which you can get in a spray paint version. So you can start straight away from this if you want to. I, however, have chosen to undercoat the Blade Guard veteran using Mechanica Standard Gray. And the reason for this is the front facing of his shield, which is going to be white. Now painting white over the top of red is a real pain to do, so spraying the model grey really helps out with that. And for the particular build of this exact miniature here, it's really difficult to keep the shield separate as a sub-assembly. So this is just the easier way of doing it, by starting out by painting that armour red. For the majority of your Blood Angels though, we do recommend that you spray them with Mephiston Red because it's a little bit quicker. But either way, the first stage is to paint in the armour plating using Mephiston Red. For the spray paint, it's because the paint on version and the spray has a slightly different finish, which will be important to fix up in case you need to do any neatening up later on. But for our miniature, of course, it's because he's currently grey and that's the wrong colour. So what we need is Mephiston Red. Now to apply this, I've got my trusty old medium base brush, which I keep around for this kind of stage. And what I'm going to be doing is putting it on the palette, which you'll notice is a wet palette. Now the reason why I'm using a wet palette for this miniature is because it's like a really detailed figure. It's like painting a character one here. So the wet palette is something I like for this kind of thing. But you can use a regular palette if you want to. The choice is yours. So what we need to do is just add a touch of water to thin the paint down so it's nice and smooth. And you can see on the wet palette, it's really good for that. It's nice and creamy. Perfect kind of consistency for what we want here. And all we need to do is apply this all over the red armour of the miniature. So I'm just going to start around about here and just start painting it on like this. Now the only detail I'm going to look to avoid completely at this stage is the part that I want to be white, which is the whole front of the shield there. So I'm just going to be careful around that detail. But for the rest of it, it's fair game. It doesn't matter if I catch other details because we are going to neaten up as we continue to add further base colours to the miniature. You can see the colour's a little bit transparent, so what I'm going to do is apply this single thin coat like this, which you can see I've made sure it's nice and smooth, so the detail stays nice and clean. But that second coat will just ensure a nice even finish before we move on to the next step. You'll notice as well the brush I'm using, this trusty old brush that I've got, it's quite frayed, it's seen a lot of action, it's not holding a point at all, but I keep it around specifically for this kind of purpose. You can see the coverage is really good, so it's really useful for this kind of thing. This first stage where you don't have to worry about being neat, and then you can move on to being neater as you continue. And uh, this way I won't damage a nicer brush, I can keep those for later on for the finer details. Once you've finished applying that even coat of Mephiston Red, you're then ready to move on to base coating the white detail of the shield. Now it's really important at this stage that you make sure you get some clean water because there will be some red in the water and this will tint the white paint and give it a slightly pinkish hue. We definitely want to avoid that happening. So once you have some clean water, the next colour you'll need is Corax White, which is an off-white but has really good coverage, so perfect for starting this out. To apply it, go for a medium large brush, something like a regiment brush from the Army Painter is a really good size for the area that we're covering here. And then we just need to get some of this paint ready. Now Corex White does tend to get quite lumpy, it's quite a thick paint, so you might need to give it a stir before you use it. But all you need to do is just get some onto your palette like that. And then, as always, just thin it down with some water. And this way you can make it nice and smooth, you see. Brought it down to about that kind of consistency there. There we go. And once you've done so, all you've got to do is start applying it to the face of the shield. So the area we're looking at here is this kind of recess part beneath the raised design in the middle. So this area here. And all we've got to do is apply a smooth coat like this. Now it's important that it's as smooth as possible, so just remember, keep adding a touch of water into the paint as you need to, to ensure it applies smoothly there like that. And then just apply a second thin coat afterwards, should you need to completely obscure the grey and get up to that pure Corex white. Thank you. 
And there we are, the Corax White has been applied and you can see we've now got a great starting point for the white on that shield. And with that done, we can now move on to the next step, which is to do some shading because both the red and the white can use the same color to be shaded at the same time. The color I'm going to use here is Agrax Earth Shade and to apply it on a smaller brush because the goal here is to paint it into the recessed details to give some definition between the different layers of the armor. Now you can see I'm also using my regular palette here, just a tile, and that's really good for using shade paints. It's a little bit easy to control them on here. And what I want to do with this is just to make sure, first of all, my brush isn't overloaded. So sometimes having some tissue to absorb white excess paint is a good idea. But really what I'm looking for is to make sure I've got a fine tip on the brush with the shade held in the reservoir in the middle of the brush. So kind of there like that. So in the body there, you see we've got the paint held in that part there. And with this, what I'm looking to do is to spot all those recesses and just run the paint into them and just let it collect there naturally. So if we take a look at the leg around here, for example, what I'm gonna do is just start running it into the area like that. And this small airbrush here from Citadel, you can see is very good at this kind of thing, holds a good point and is just really easily able to just run that shade into those corners like that. So you just run it in so you get enough definition to help separate those plates out from each other. Now, whilst you're doing this, it's entirely possible and very likely, in fact, because it'll happen with me, I'm sure, that splash will happen sometimes as you're doing it, like that, for example. If that happens, if you quickly wash your brush, it's very easy just to wipe away the excess like that. But if it does dry and you see any marks showing there, just go back over that with Mephiston Red and that'll fix that up, no problem. Now, in addition, we want to do the shading on the white details too. And on these parts, it's again, just a matter of looking for the recesses and running the paint into them. This will include things like rivets, such as these ones going around here. And you just let the paint just run on its own around those areas there like that. And it's a good idea as well to run this color into that recess that goes around the outside of the white just along there, because this forms a really good key line, which will be very useful in the next step when we start painting some gold. In addition, we've got that raised detail in the center. So we want to shade around that too. So that means just running it into that little corner along there like that. And there we are, the recess shade is applied and you can see it gives much more definition to all those armor plates and to the shield as well. The next step is to return to the white facing on the shield to shift it a little bit more towards a pure white because it's a little bit gray at the moment. So for this, what I'm gonna do is make a mix with Corax white, which I still have my, on my wet palette from earlier on. We're gonna mix it with matte white from the Army Painter, which is a really nice pure white. But if you wanna stick just to Citadel paints, then White Scar is the one to use here. But for this, what I want to do is make a roughly 50-50 mix. So on the palette, I'm just gonna put some of this matte white next to it there like that. And then I'm going for a monster brush from the Army Painter here to actually create the mix. So just make sure the brush is wet first of all. There you go. And start bringing them together there like that. So I'm looking to make the actual color I want in the middle of these two. And by mixing the colors like this, I can go back and forth between one and the other like that, bringing them in as I want until I get to the kind of tone that I want. And what I'm looking for is around about that, about halfway. Okay, so with that mixed up, we're then ready to apply it. So to paint this on, I'm gonna go for an Army Painter regiment brush just here. And we just need to, as always, load up with a touch of water mixed in, there we go. And then with this color, it's just a matter of applying it onto the flat of the white of the shield. So rather than painting the whole thing like we did previously, what I'm looking to do is to paint the middle of these panels and not go quite into the corners where I put that shade earlier on. So you see around this rivet, for example, I'm just going to go close to it, but not quite over it. So that way I've still got the definition of the shade going around it, but you can see I'm also now bringing the color closer to a pure white. And with that done, we now have a really nice white in the shield and can move on to the next area of color, which is going to be to start to block in all the gold detail. Now on the average Blood Angel, there's not actually very much. It's just a little bit on the side of the bolt rifle usually, but for this guy, there's actually quite a lot. And being a veteran, of course, he's got a gold helmet as well. So what we need to do for all of this is base coat it using Retributor Armor. Then to shade it, I'm gonna paint over it with some Gulliman Flesh, and then we're going to return to Retributor Armor once more to bring the shine back to it. But first of all, we need to base coat with Retributor Armor, and you can see I've gone back to my regular palette once again, just to make sure that my wet palette doesn't get contaminated with any metal flecks from the paint. And to apply this, I'm using the Regiment Brush from the Army Painter once again, but feel free to switch to a smaller one should you need to, for example, a medium layer from Citadel. Whatever the case though, once you've got the paint thinned down, it's just a matter of picking out anything that you want to be gold. As I said, on a regular intercessor, it'll just be a little design on the side of the bolt rifle, but for our veteran here, there's quite a lot. First of all, we've got the helmet and the halo behind it as well, so all the way around there. We also have the trim of the shoulder plates on these guys, so that's gonna be all this area just here. And when you're doing this, the trick is of course not getting it onto the red that we've painted so far. So this is all about angling the brush correctly. You can see for this initial part here with this little ridge, it's very easy just to let the bristles run into it. But when it comes to the edges around there and this side, it's actually easier if you turn the model and approach it with the side of your brush like this and just skim it along very lightly. You can see I'm being very delicate, very light, 
This way the bristles can't fall onto the red of the inner part of the shoulder plate and they get a nice clean line between the two there like that. And for the other side, again, you just turn it around the other way and approach it in the same kind of manner and this way around like that. Very, very gentle, very careful. Okay. Also, there's going to be some gold details on the weapons, such as on the sword. So we've got all this area here, and it's essentially anything decorative. So areas such as this raised design that we've got on the wrist, and again, using the side of the brush, approaching very gently so it doesn't fall onto the red surrounding it, there like that. And there will be plenty of gold details around the center of the body too, things like the belt buckle and stuff like that. Now, one final thing is, of course, the shield. And for this, it's all the rim and the raised design in the middle. This is just like doing the rim on the shoulder plate. So using the side of your brush for the raised design in the center like that, not worrying about the skulls for the time being, just going for that trim there like that. Now, when it comes to the rim around here, we can't quite use the side of the brush in the same way because it's not raised up in any way from the white. So for that, really brace your hands. So you can see I'm just making sure my hands are touching all the time, which prevents shaking. And this way I can use my brush very carefully to run down like that, just very steadily running all the way down like that. Then let that dry and do a second coat in the exact same way before moving on to the next step. Once you've finished picking out all that gold detail, the next step is to paint over it using Gullum and Flesh Contrast Paint using a neat motion like this. You want to be really careful and just keep it on the gold details only. So for this, I recommend using a regiment brush from the Army Painter. And once the Gullum and Flesh is completely dry, we're then ready to return to Retributor Armour, this time thinned with a little bit more water. And for this, all we need to do is apply a thin coat onto the flatter areas of the gold, avoiding the recessed areas where it's gone a little bit more red. You can see in that corner there, for example, and just painting this onto the flat areas. And what this does is just gives a really nice shiny sheen to all of this gold. And there we are with that done. You can see the gold now has a lovely shine to it and also lots of depth still as well. And with that done, we can now move on to the next base coat in the miniature, which is going to be for all the silver detail. For this, the color I'm going to use is Iron Hand Steel, applied once again using that regiment brush. And again, I'm still using my regular palette here because it's a metallic paint. And with this, what we want to do is just make sure that it's nicely thinned down and that the brush isn't overloaded because some of the detail here is quite fine. So we want lots of control to be able to access it. So once the paint's like that, we're ready to start painting these details. And on this particular miniature, there's quite a bit of silver in decorative parts, including on the shield just here. So what I want to do is use this to pick out all these skulls, of which there are, of course, quite a lot running along here and going all the way down here. Just being careful, you see, that's what we need that control for to get in between that little spike that we've got from the gold just there. Now I'm going to be painting the back of the shield as well, which you can see is a little bit tricky to access, but it's just a matter of taking your time, just painting in there gently like that, just getting that middle area and all those little power nodes that we've got as well. Now on the back of the miniature, there's some more silver details to do in the form of these vents that we've got on here. So these more kind of mechanical parts, such as along here and inside there as well. There's a bit of detail on his holstered pistol around here, including the base of it just there and the grip. And then also the sword. Now I'm not gonna paint the sword silver because we're gonna go for a different effect later on, more of like a power swordy kind of glow effect, but you can paint it silver if you want to. If you decide you want to, now's the time to base coat the whole of the blade with this color. And with that, the silver is base coated, and now I can move on to applying some more base coats to the miniature because we have four more that we need to do at this stage, and all of them use the same technique as what we've just been doing. So we're going to run through those quickly for you now. Now, first of all, we're going to be painting in the black on the miniature, and for this, we need actually two different shades of black because there are two tones on the average Blood Angel. First of all, we have a soft black, which is going to be for all the joints in the armor, and for this, I'm going to use some Corvus black. Then after that, we need a darker black for the flat armor panels on the miniature, and so for this, I'm going to use matte black from the Army Painter. Although, if you want to stick to Citadel in a bad and black is the color to use here. Now after that we need to base coat all the leather for which we need dry bark and then finally for the purity seal wax we need screamer pink. But first of all we need coarse black and with this you can see I'm returning to my wet palette and also I've cleaned the water as well because at the stage we've just done by that point there's going to be a lot of metal floating around the water so you need clean water at this stage. So once you've done that all you need to do is get a little bit of this and use it to thin your paint down. There we go. And then for this, what we're looking for is, as I say, the softer black details on the armor. So it's not actually the armor at all, it's actually the joints in it. So if you look at the back of it, you can see the joints for the legs. We're looking for areas like that, ones that are not gonna be actual armor plating, more of kind of like um, rubber or something like that, whatever this kind of material is. So that area there like that. Now also on this particular miniature, 
This is the great color for painting in the tabard as well. So at this stage, be sure to base coat all of this. It can be a little bit tricky getting amongst some of the details sometimes around here, but just take your time and neaten up should you need to. And when you're doing the back of the miniature as well, just be really careful not to get this color onto the legs. Once you've finished with Corvus Black, we're then ready to move on to the darker black. So matte black here from the Army Painter. And to begin with for this, what we need to do is to paint the winged skull design that's on the chest plate of every Blood Angel. So that's this whole area here. Just let the paint run into the recess of that texture like that to completely coat it with this black paint. Now, if you're painting a regular Blood Angel Intercessor or something like that, then there'll also be the casing of the bolt rifle to do. Of course, with this guy, we don't have any guns showing like that, so we can't really do that. But this model is actually the sergeant of the unit, as denoted by that little skull we got on the helmet there. And on Blood Angel sergeants, they have the inside of the shoulder plates black, black as well. So what I need to do with this colour is blocking this whole area like this, being really careful when I get close to that gold, and then just sweeping outwards onto the flat of the panel. And you can see on an open space like this, it's a little bit transparent, so I'll just be applying two thin coats. Now at this stage we've also got a possibility of doing an extra bit of detail because these models all have a tilting plate on here with individual heraldry. So for this guy I want to do something a little bit elaborate on here. So you could just put a transfer on if you wanted to, but I'm going to split it so it's half and half, then later on we'll do a little pattern on the black side of it. So looking at what I've got here, I've got the chest eagle being black here, or the chest wing skull design being black, and then if I did this side black the two would kind of fade together. So I'm going to leave that side red and do this side black. To do this, you can see I'm just checking on here just to make sure the paint's flowing easily from my brush, and yes it is. So what I want to do is just line myself up to be painting downwards and start with a line roughly in the middle there, aiming for that rivet at the bottom there. So I'm just going to start sweeping down like this, and there we go. So that's a nice straight line. If you wobble a little bit, you can always go back to Mephiston Red just to neaten up them there. Once I've got that dividing line, it's just a matter of blocking out this side like this. With that done, we're now ready to move on to dried bark. And this is for all the leather on the miniature. So we're looking at the belt, including all the pouches that are on it, and the holster of the pistol. And finally, using Screamer Pink, base coat all of the wax of the purity seals. And with all those base coats now applied, we can move on to washing them. And for this, what we need is some Nuln Oil. So to apply this, I'm again going to use that regiment brush because it's a good size now for what we're doing. But for this, what we need to do is to focus it on these new colours that we've added since we did all of that gold. So use your palette to help control with this. And you can see I've gone back to the tile again for the wash. And I'm just going to apply a little puddle there that I can draw from to make sure that my brush isn't overloaded because it's very easy to have too much like that, you see. So get rid of the excess. And then what we're looking to do is to paint this on those new colours. So we're looking at the silvers and the leather and the purity seal wax and also the softer black of the joints. Now don't worry about the tabard for the time being. You'll see why in the next stage when we start painting some more detail on that. But we're looking for everything else such as the whole holster just here. And one other thing you don't need to worry about doing is the flat black of these armour panels because you won't really see it there. But instead look for the softer black for example on the joints of the armour. And there we are, those details are now washed, so we can move on to applying the last of the base coats that we need to paint to the miniature, and then bring that colour up to the same stage as everything else. And this colour is Zandri Dust, to be base coated on all the parchment and also part of the tabard. Now once that's applied, we can then wash all over the tabard and the parchment using Agrax Shade, and that will really tie together the Corvus Black and the Zandri Dust that we both have on that tabard. Now, once that's completely dry, we can move on to layering, for which we once again will need Corvus Black, followed by Zandri Dust. But first of all we need that Zandri dust and I'm going to be applying it again with my regiment brush and for this we just need to get it ready on the palette as always. There we go. And then we're ready to start base coating these details. So to begin with we have the parchment of the purity seals such as the ones running all the way down here. So we just need to block over the whole area there like that. But also we have this area in the tabard that's this colour. Now this is towards the bottom of it and to do this what we need to do is just kind of mark out where we want it to be first of all. Because there's kind of three flat areas in the front of the tabard there so we will use that as a starting point. Around about there I think is a good place to go for so just paint a line across it like that then follow that along the length of it using the bottom of it as guidance. So we're then going to go to about there, like that, and then to about there. There we go. And we can fine adjust it if we fine tune it if we need to, but that's a pretty consistent line there. From this point on, it's just a case of blocking it in beneath it, like that. And then using that, we can then start to go into these recessed areas using it as guidance to make sure the line stays straight all the way along. Thank you. 
Once you've finished applying the base coat, the next step is to paint over the Zandri dust with Agrax Earth Shade, and on the tabard, we also want to bring this colour up over the black as well. Once that wash is dry, we're then ready to go back to Corvus Black to reapply it to the tabard only. And for this, what we're looking to do is to paint a smooth coat of it on these flatter areas here, leaving it darker in the recessed areas such as in there. And with that done, we can then move on to Zandri Dust to apply it first of all to the lower area of the tabard. So again, looking for these flatter areas such as along here, just leaving the shade still showing in the deeper recessed areas such as just there and in a little crease there. Now also we want to do this on the parchment, and for this what I do is hold my brush sideways onto it and just paint some lines running along it like this. And I'm looking for the really shallow little creases that we've got. You can see there's a few down there. When you get to those parts, just skip the recessed areas like that to leave a little bit of shading still showing in there. And there we go, with that done, the model's looking, well, actually really good. And in fact, if you'd painted the sword silver, you could at this stage just skip ahead, do the base, apply the transfers, and your model's ready for the battlefield. However, what we're gonna do now is start working on some highlights on the miniature to really brighten it up and help the details stand out much more. And the first stage for doing that is going to be to highlight the red power armor, which is, of course, the main feature of Blood Angels. Now, to do this, we're gonna use a technique called edge highlighting, which is the classic way of highlighting space marines. And to do it, you'll need two colors. First of all, Evil Sun Scarlet for the main highlight, and then the second highlight to take a little bit further, because this is a character piece miniature, we need some Fire Dragon Bright. But first of all, we need that Evil Sun Scarlet. And for this, what you need to do is just get hold of a brush that holds a good point. The actual overall size of the brush doesn't matter a great deal, but the point is vital. If in doubt, though, go for a smaller brush. So I'm using a detail brush here from the Omni Painter, which is really good for this kind of thing. And to do this, really the great trick of it is the correct use of the palette to get the paint ready. So you need to focus on this first of all to get them to do just that. And so first of all, just put some Evil Sun Scarlet onto your palette and a little blob there like that. And then what we need to do is to thin this down in such a way that it flows really easily from the brush but doesn't overwhelm the miniature in one go. Okay, so start adding some water to the side of your little puddle of paint just there like that, and you can use this to add more water as you need to. And what I'm looking for is to get it to a point where it's you know starting to go a little bit see-through there on the palette, but what I can start testing with it now is just trying painting some lines, and you can see it's very easily flowing from, from my brush just there. So that's kind of what I want from it, but at the moment I still have too much paint there on the brush, so what I'm gonna do and now just put a tiny bit more water in there like that. And there we go, and now load up fresh. So get rid of the excess paint off your brush so it's not gonna overwhelm the model. There we go, and then start fresh. So what we need to do is just draw some of that paint up into the main body of the brush, and then we'll start testing it on the palette. So remember, those lines. Gonna start along here and see how it goes. So start doing some like this, and there you go, you see? The paint's just flowing easily from the brush like that. Now, if you get the paint to this consistency, it will apply to the miniature so much easier, which makes it, well, perfect for the edge highlighting. You won't be struggling and getting a rough finish to things. It'll just flow into the model. So at that point, the only thing you need to worry about is keeping your hands steady. So once you've got the paint down to this point, we are then ready to start applying it to the model. So when you're edge highlighting onto the figure, there's actually two main ways of doing it. The first one's quite an easy way. What you do is rather than using the tip of your brush, use the side of it. So just find on, well, Primaris Marines are great for this kind of thing because the edges stand out so much. This edge here, I just get the brush approaching it so it's using the side close to the tip and you just skim down that edge like that. And you can do it a few times to build up the color, but you see by doing that, I get a really neat straight line very easily. Now the trick to doing this correctly is to angle the model so that that hand motion is comfortable. So it's like downward sweep like that, right? So what I do is turn the model sideways to be able to access this next line and then follow that like that. And then turn it all the way around so I can access this one here and go for that tiny little splodge of gold just there. But you can see again, I'm using the edge of my brush and just running along like that. Always turning the model as I need to, to be able to get to those areas. And then on the back of the leg, just along there like that. So you see, it's actually quite straightforward. And when you get the hang of it, it can get really quick as well. There are, of course, though, some lines that you can't quite reach with this kind of thing because the detail doesn't stand out enough for it to do it. It's just not really possible to do it. And that's the case in little lines just along there. Now, it's perfectly possible to completely highlight your Space Marines only doing this kind of edge work like this. It'll still look great. All the details will stand out. But if you want to take it to the next level and pick out those parts, then the easiest way to do it is to, first of all, Make sure your hands are really nicely braced so you're nice and steady. See, I'm really holding like that. And then painting a downward motion. So you're looking kind of down the brush and sweeping down. And this way, it's just a matter of, well, controlling it as you go down. So on this one, for example, using the tip of the brush, running down like that. That way I can get a neat highlight like that. And then you just kind of repeat that. And all these edges, just turn the model as you need to, 
to be able to access such lines. So these little vents at the back, again, just turn the model. So I'm painting downwards and just do that downward sweeping motion there like that. So really that's all there is to it. It's just a case of just repeating those techniques all the way around the miniature. So just take your time and be as neat as you can here. This is the one stage that's really gonna make your Space Marine stand out. So just if you're gonna take your time in any one step, this is the one to do it in. Once you finish that edge highlight, you could leave the red armor there, but for this miniature, we want to take it just a little bit further. So now we're gonna add an extra fine highlight of Fire Dragon Bright. Now again, I'm using the detail brush. I'm gonna edge highlight this on. And with this color, what I'm looking for is the sharpest areas on the armor and just applying a small amount to them just to make them stand out a little bit more. So you can see on the little tilting plate I'm doing here, I'm just applying small amounts of this orange just in those little corners there, just to make them appear much sharper. And uh, with this color, it's actually very easy to overwhelm the red. So this is why I'm being so careful with it and only putting small amounts on. So it's just a matter of looking around for those edges now and just gently picking them out. And with that fine highlight applied, the red of the power armor is now complete. And we can move on to highlighting the other details in the miniature for which we need much the same technique. So first of all, what we're gonna do is highlight all the gold details for which we need Liberator Gold. And then all the silver details need Stormhost Silver. And we can also use this as an extra fine highlight on that gold as well. Now after that, we'll need some Gorthor Brown for the leather and then Mechanicus Standard Gray, followed by Administratum Gray for all the black detail. But first of all, what we need is Liberator Gold. So again, it's just the same sort of techniques as what we did previously. So I'm still going to use that detail brush from the Army Painter here. And you can see that because we've gone to a metallic paint, I've switched back to my regular palette just here. But still, preparing the paint is just the same as in that previous step. Remember, get it thinned down really nicely like that, and then use your palette to test it to see how it's flowing from the brush onto the miniature. And this is going very easily from the brush just there, so I think that's pretty good. So load up fresh, make sure there's not too much on there and then we're ready to start applying it to the gold details. So remember, use the edge of your brush whenever you can, such as on the arc of these shoulder plates by just skimming along there like that, just running along neatly as you can. But always remember that when it gets to those parts that are a little bit trickier to get to, you can always switch the tip of your brush if you need to, to just start running along those edges, just really carefully in that downward motion like that. With that done, we can then move on to Stormhost Silver. Once again, edge highlighted onto all the silver details to begin with. So just following around all those edges once more. But in addition, if you want to take the gold a little bit further, then here you can do an extra fine highlight, just like we did with the orange, just aiming a small amount of this color on the very sharpest corners. So just lie on top of the helmet and also on the front of the grill at the front, just there, like that. Now in addition, scatter around the miniature, there's various studs in the armor and be sure to pick those out at this stage as well. Next up, we're ready to highlight all the leather detail using Gorthor Brown, once again using a detail brush just to pick out all those sharper edges on these details. Next, we're ready for Mechanica Standard Grey to edge highlight all the black detail. And to begin with, we're looking for these black areas and just doing an edge highlight running all the way around them like that. But also, we've got the black on the tabard to do. Now for this, go around the outside edge on both sides. But in addition, we're looking for the tops of the creases on the fabric. So you can see we've got some running down the middle there where the light is catching. What we're gonna do is accentuate these by just painting some of this color following along that top part there like that. And again, remember that downward motion I was talking about earlier on, that's exactly what I'm doing here, just following that motion all the way down to get a nice neat line in those areas. Now we also need to do a highlight on the wings that we've got on the chest plate just here. And to do this, the best way to do it is to angle the model like this. So you're using the side of your brush and just gently run down the feathers like this so your brush just catches the raised area to get a nice highlight like that. And then finally, using Administratum Grey, we're ready to apply a fine highlight to the black. And this is just like with that orange earlier on, just look for the sharpest corners and apply a small amount of this color right in those areas. And with those highlights applied, this Blood Angel is well on the way to being finished, but we still have a few small details left to highlight and a few of the little details to paint in as well. So for those, what we need first of all is a shabty bone for all the parchment and the tabard, then some Screaming Skull to do a fine highlight on those details. After that, we'll need a little bit of Pink Horror, and this is going to be for the wax and the purity seals. And after that, for those other fine details, what we'll need is Dryad Bark, followed by some Corax White. But first of all, we need a shabty bone, and I'm still using my detail brush for this. And some of this is going to be highlighting like we did previously, but we've also got a little bit of layering to do here. So just make sure your paint's thinned down, ready for that. I'll touch more water in there. There we go. 
And then with this, what we're looking to do, first of all, on that tab bar, the kind of uh, Xandri dust color that we've got towards the bottom of it. For this, we just need to highlight it. And the highlighting is just continuing on what we did with the black above it, really. So just a fine highlight going around the edge, using the side of the brush like that. And then these lines that we've got on the tops of the creases, just continue them down all the way to the bottom of the fabric. So there, like that, and like that. Now also we need to do some of this on the parchment and this is where the layering is going to be. Remember that's kind of sideways motion we did previously. Same sort of thing but leaving a little bit of the Xandri dust showing through like this. And finally using Screaming Skull we're ready to apply a fine highlight to the tabard first of all by just painting small amounts towards the very bottom such as just there like that and small bits in the corner too so just there like that repeated on the opposite side as well. As for the parchment, what we need to do is run a highlight down either side, so just using the side of your brush to skim along like that and underneath. And on the more prominent creases, just do a small amount running along them, such as just there. And there we are with the parchment now painted in. We can then paint the wax as well. For this, we need some pink horror. And with this, you just need to go around the upper raised area of the outside of the purity seal, so all the way along there like that, just gently building up the color. And then on the interior part, just do a small amount of this color just at the very top there like that. And with all those highlights applied, we can now move on to some finer details. And for this, first we need some dried bark to do some text on the purity seal parchment. And to do this, all you've got to do is just do some little wiggly lines just running along horizontally on the paper like this. Now to get the paint diluted to the correct amount is just like when you're doing edge highlighting. Make it so it's runny, but be sure not to overload your brush. And just use the tip of it like that, just letting your hand shake ever so slightly to get the impression of text. And with that done, I'm now going to add a small amount of Corax white onto the tilting plate up here. Now the plan is to do a little transfer on the red side, but on the black side, I want to do a half chevron. So for this, what I'm gonna do, using the detail brush once more, is just get that Corax white at about 45 degrees from horizontal. So this kind of angle here, and then it's just a matter of painting in a downward motion. So that comfortable motion straight towards myself, and then just slowly widen it out there like that. And with that all done, the model is very nearly finished. All we've got left to do is to paint in the power sword blade and the eye lenses. So it's the power sword blade that we're going to do now. And for this, we're going to do a kind of energy effect on it. And you don't have to do this if you don't want to. You can just paint the blade silver like we did the rest of the silver in the miniature. But for this effect, what we need to do is start out with a base coat of Fenrisian Grey. So I'm going to be applying this using the regiment brush from the Army Painter. And for this first coat, as I said, all you've got to do is block in the whole blade with this. So it's just a matter of getting some of this nicely thinned out on your palette. There we go making sure it's not overly thin, so that's about right there. And then once you've got that ready, all you've got to do is start blocking out the entire sword. And here you can see is the real benefit of using that grey undercoat. It's now really easy to apply this over this area like this. So the whole of the blade has two thin coats going all the way up to the cross guard just here. Once you've achieved that even base coat on there, we're then ready to move on to starting the actual effect on the blade itself. And for this, what we're going to be doing is doing some glazing. The colour we need for it to begin with is Thunderhawk Blue. And for this, I do recommend getting hold of the wet palette because it makes it so much easier. Now I've gone for my regiment brush from the Army Painter here just because it holds a good amount of paint for what we're going to be doing. But what I want to do on the palette is create a very, very thin version of this colour. So I'm just going to get some on there like that and make sure my brush is clean. A touch of water, there we go, and then start putting it on the side and bringing the paint into it. And what I'm looking to create here is a very, very thin version of this paint on the palette. So you can see, as I add a bit more pigment into it, that water just becomes tinted with that color and I get a very thin version of the paint there like that. So I'm just gonna create a little bit more of it. There we go, bring a bit more in. There we go, so I've got a nice little pool of that to draw from. So what we need to do is to apply this to the blade of the sword, kind of an opposite halves on either side of it. And we want to do it in thin coats, slowly building it up. So this is a process where you're just going to gradually build and build for it. So you need to be patient with this part. But to do it, the trick is to make sure you apply each coat really thinly so the, the water in there doesn't pool anywhere so you don't get like little bubbles appearing in it or anything. So I tend to get rid of the paint off my brush and then load up fresh like this. And then what we're going to do on the blade is start making it darker towards the bottom, so down there, and darker at the top just there. So for the first coat of it, what I'm going to do is start quite far back and in, in let's try and get it around that little node just there. But then in one motion, just bring it down to the end of the blade like that. On the other side, we need to do it the opposite way around. So starting around about there, just go all the way up to the base of the blade like that. 
And then you just need to let it dry. Because it's so thin, it dries very fast. In fact, it is dry now, so now I can do another coat. And it's just the same thing. I'm going to apply another coat down there like that. And on the opposite side, starting at about there this time, another coat like that. Now the goal is, each time you add a coat of this, to get slightly smaller in the area that you're applying it to. So the colour becomes more intense on the opposite sides. So the next time I apply it, I'm going to be going kind of alongside that node, and bringing it down once again. On the other side, a little bit further down, so about there, like that. And you can see, as I add more coats, the colour's starting to become stronger. It usually takes three or four for it to become noticeable, but it's very, very gradual. So as I keep doing this, I start to get a stronger and stronger colour appearing like this. So there's no hard and fast rule as to how many times you'll need to do this. Just keep on going until you get a solid Thunderhawk blue appearing from about halfway down the blade. As you're doing this, it's important that you make sure that each coat is completely dry before you do the next one. So if you see a little part where it's still wet, just give it time and then carry on once it has dried. Keep applying those thin coats of Thunderhawk Blue until you reach this point where you can see half the blade on either side is that solid colour. And the same is true on the inside of the blade just there as well. And with that done, we can now move on to the next step to use Stegodon Scale Green to continue the effect a little bit further. Same process for this, so I'm still going to use the regiment brush for it, and I'm going to prepare the paint in the exact same way that I did in the previous step. So a little bit of that paint on there, and then we need to just make sure that it's really heavily watered down. So not tons of water in one go, just a little puddle like that and bring the pigment in so you get a very, very thin version of the paint like that. So just keep testing it on the palette to make sure it's very thin. If in doubt, add a touch more water. There we go, because we can always add more coats if we need to. And once you've got it there like that, what we can then do is just get the excess off the brush. There we go. And load up fresh. And what we're going to do here is basically repeat the process of what we did in the previous step. So. What we want to do is make the blade darker towards Stegodon scale green, towards there and there. So just like before, start a little bit lower down this time and apply a thin coat like that. And then a thin coat going up the opposite direction like that. And then as before, just give it a moment to dry. It shouldn't take very long if you've got it thin enough. There we go. And we can do another coat a little bit further down towards the tip of the blade like that. And then the same going up towards the base. And again, just keep on repeating this process until you get to a solid Stegodon scale green in kind of the lower part just down there and the base just up there. Now there's one other thing we can do at this stage as well, and that is that little power node that we've got going down the side of the power sword. For this, still with that thinned Stegodon scale green, all you need to do is just run some of the colour into the recess around it. So just drop it into that little area there like that and follow it all the way to the base of the blade. And there we are with many, many thin coats applied. You can see we get a nice smooth transition from dark to light on the flat of the blade there. And with that done, we can now move on to highlighting it. And then we've just got a few little details to finish off too. So what we need now is some ortho and grey to highlight the sword, followed by some matte white for a few details. Then finally, we need a little bit of built-in green as well. But first of all, what we need is ortho and grey. And I'm going for my regiment brush again to apply this. And uh, you, this is quite a large brush for this sort of area. You can go for a smaller brush if you want to for this, but there's not much intricate detail to go around here. So I find having a larger brush is really nice because it holds quite a lot of paint here. So I'm going to be thinning the paint down like we normally do. So this is edge highlighted to begin with. So just make sure the paint's soaked up into the reservoir in the middle of the brush there, into the body of it, and then get rid of the excess. And then we're ready to start applying it. So with this, what I'm looking to do is an edge highlight all the way around the outside of the blade. So using the side of your brush, all you've got to do is just start skimming all the way down. So just let it catch that cutting edge there like that, steadily building it up and following all the way down to the base of the sword there like that. And then you just repeat it on the other side as well. Pick out the little node, so just there like that, and then go down towards the base of the blade there. And then there's also that highlight down the middle of the blade just there. Now for this, it's again an edge highlight, but what you need to do is just angle your brush so it's flat on against the side of the blade. So as you gently skim this, the bristles are just going to catch that central ridge. So just very, very lightly, very, very gently, just gradually work your way down there like that. And once that highlight's applied, we can then move on to matte white to finish off the sword blade to begin with. And you can see now I'm using my detail brush. You'll see why in a moment. But for the sword, the first thing we need to do is a little highlight on the very end of it. So on this curved part on either side, just going to where it starts going straight there like that. And then a small amount in the very middle, just the tip of the blade like that where it's sharpest. Now also at this stage, we want to just pick out the node once more just to finish it off. Just a little bit of this white across it there like that. And there we go, the sword with those highlights done will be finished. Now also there's a little bit more to do with white at this stage. The first part of this is, you don't strictly have to do this, but if you want to, you can do a highlight on the white of the shield here. 
And for this, it's just an edge highlight very carefully applied on this area here where it just meets the gold. So just very gently painted along that recess along there. Now, another thing that we need to paint in with white at this stage is the eye lenses. And you can see the eyes at the moment, they're actually quite dark in there. And that's ideal for what we want here because we're going to go for a kind of a greenish glow effect. So with this, what we need to do is, if it's not quite as dark, first of all, just run a little bit of Norn Oil in there. But then you can see that kind of gold that we've got in the center of it. What I want to do is just pick that out with a bit of matte white there like that. So notice that I'm painting along the length of the eye lens like that. So it's easy to get into that detail. Now one final little thing I'm going to do, you see the white little stripe we've got just there? I'm going to do a quick little edge highlight on the edge of the shield there like that. And then finally, all you need is a small amount of Beltang green to wash into the eye lenses to give them a green glow. And for this, all you've got to do is hold your hands as steady as you can and just let the paint just run into that whole recessed area like that so the white shows through in the middle. And there you go, a green glow. Now once you've done this, all you need to do is apply any transfers that you want into your miniature and then it's ready to be based. Now, as always, it's entirely up to you how you base it, but for me, I'm going to go for some urban rubble. And with that base now fully painted, this Blood Angels Bladeguard veteran is complete and ready to unleash the wrath of the Emperor upon his enemies. So as you've seen, painting Blood Angels is very straightforward, but the most difficult part about them is doing the edge highlighting on the red armour. Now the real trick to doing this isn't necessarily what you're doing to apply the paint to the miniature, it's actually quite a lot about what you're doing on the palette to get the paint ready. So just remember to make sure you thin it down to the correct amount and get it loaded up correctly onto your brush as well, and this way you'll find it flows very easily from the brush onto the miniature. If you're struggling, take another look at what you're doing on the palette because odds are the real trick to getting it right is going to be just changing what you do there ever so slightly. But anyway, we really hope you enjoyed this video, have fun painting your Blood Angels, and we'll see you all again very soon.